y is less than or equal to x squared. What would this look like? Well, the first thing we know is, just like I've been showing this pattern here, right? That y equals x squared will be the boundary, right? That's so important, I want you to write that down. It's that concept that you can find the boundary of inequality by setting it to be an equation. This is the boundary. Because it's inclusive, because it's inclusive, I'm actually going to draw a solid line rather than a dotted line like I did here. So let's draw this guy. You get the idea. Okay. Now you can see my line here, my boundary y equals x squared, which I already have labeled, which is good. You should also label because very frequently you'll get lots of these on the same graph. It divides the coordinate axes into two halves. I suppose you could call it like an inside and an outside. Which part is in the region? Which part satisfies the inequality? Any takers? Yeah. Okay, so you could describe the outside. How will we test this out? Now, remember before I said, hey, wherever you can, try and test the origin. Why did I suggest that, by the way? Like, what's useful about the origin? Yeah, because it's the easiest to sub in. Yeah, zero and zero are always easy to sub in. They just make things really simple. In this case, you cannot or you won't get much value out of testing the origin. Why not? It's right on the boundary. So, um, number one, it's true, but that doesn't tell you anything about which side works. Okay. So instead, we need to pick a point that's clearly on one side. So what would you like me to pick? One, one zero. How about one zero? One zero. This point here. Just like um, just like zero, one's also pretty nice to evaluate in lots of ways. And I also try and avoid negatives wherever I can because because negatives. Okay. So does this um does it work? Yes. Is zero less than or equal to one squared? And the answer is yes. So just like before, I'm going to say, well, firstly, this guy gets a tick, so he's good. Which means that, in fact, everything on the same side of the boundary as this guy is also in. So I'm going with this outside area here. Um, and if you have a pencil, what I would encourage you to do is to shade. Shading looks so much better than putting these lines because it just gets confusing. Like, just, yeah. Shading is vastly superior, but I cannot shade in whiteboard markers, so I'm just... Doing my best. Question. How would you not just algebraic this without something? You would not. You would not. Uh, because what you're trying to do is draw a picture. You, you use the picture to your advantage. And with with one-dimensional ones, you can manipulate an inequality like that quite successfully and easily. But um, with two variables, it's not. It's really not worth it. Okay. Now I want to get across to you a bit of a rule of thumb here. Remember, I said like inside and outside here. And over here, I said left and right. Did you notice that? But I also provided the equations to you with y as the subject. Y as the subject. Do you notice that? Y is less than or equal to. Y is less than. Okay. If you see, and this is probably worth writing down after I show it to you. If you see y as the subject, and this is then less than or greater than. Okay. You can really read this as above or below. These are all less than. So it's going to be below. And this one over here also happens to be below. Can you see if I switch the direction of the inequality, right? If I made this y is greater than or equal to x squared, you'd get every point above the parabola, okay? Now that rule of thumb will be really helpful when I give you this next example, but Eric, you have a question first. What if it was y is less than minus 2x plus 1, then the slope would be going the other way. Y is less than minus 2x plus 1, is that what you said? Yeah. Yep. Or anything Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Great question. So let's quickly draw that and I'll show you how to use this rule of thumb. Um, negative 2x plus 1, like so. I'm going to suggest, based on this rule of thumb, we have a fancy name for this, we call these heuristics, by the way. I'm going to suggest it's beneath, beneath this line, which is this part over here. Can we test it out? Does the origin satisfy this area that I've shaded? Yeah. It does, doesn't it? Zero is less than one. It does work, okay? But it starts to get trickier where you consider, do you remember we had a look at limits and continuity? You remember continuity? Okay, you're gonna have to be a little more careful with this one. I want you to try this guy. Now I've given you some tools. 
So far, the approach we've been taking is, first, put in that boundary, and then think, okay, am I on this side or this side? I want you to have a go at this question and see if you can use those tools in the same way. Have a go, see what you come up with. I have begun by taking the same approach that we've seen so far, which is to say, well, if you're gonna have a region, the region has to be fenced in somewhere, right? There has to be a boundary. And each time I've noticed that the way to get the boundary is by setting the inequality to be an equation. So here is y equals one on x. Y equals one on x. That's the equation of the boundary. If you have not already, please label the equation boundary, it's critical. Then I can sit and I try to work out, okay, on which side am I? However, you notice, unlike the previous examples, there are two branches here. There are two branches. So when I say, oh, there's like different sections here. Well, it's not so simple as just saying there's an up and a down, or a left and a right, or an inside and an outside, okay? On the face of it, it looks like there's kind of three sections. Like there's this one, and then there's this in between, and then there's this one, right? But even that doesn't tell the whole story, and I tried to clue you into this by saying, there's also a discontinuity here, right? Where is the discontinuity? Why? It's at, okay, now I, we tend to usually say discontinuity in terms of domain. So even though it's true, there is a discontinuity at y equals zero. It's more meaningful to say there's a discontinuity at x equals zero because if, for example, we have a look at this guy, right? You would say this function is continuous, right? No breaks. You can draw the whole thing in one go, but you wouldn't say, oh, but there's a discontinuity down here. It's like, yeah, but, but we don't care about that. For all x values, it's fine. For this x value here, x equals zero, you're in trouble. Right? So I'm just going to label here and I'm just going to note that. Okay? Now at this point I want to think again, I'm going to use the same rule of thumb I had before. I noticed that y is the subject. y is greater than. So that suggests to me which region should I be looking in? When I had a look at this one, I said it's below. Right? And for this one I also said below. Well this time I've got y is greater than which suggests above. Right? So let's find a point that's above and test it out. How about here? That's a pretty nice convenient spot to test. I guess the coordinates would be negative one, zero. Does this point satisfy the inequality? Have a look. Yes. Negative one, zero. So that would be the zero there. And this would be one on negative one. One on negative one, of course, being negative one. Is zero greater than negative one? It is. And in fact, if you put zero in here, and any negative number in there, do you notice that? Does that make sense? They're all, they're all fine, right? And you can go ahead and you can test a few more. So therefore, as my rule of thumb predicted, up here, above here, everything looks good. You can test a few more to contain yourself. But then there's a discontinuity. Things stop. The world stops working at x equals zero for this function. So when we have a look over here, again, I want to test my intuition and see does this being above this also work? What's, what's a point over here I could test? One, two. One, two. One, two would be, there's one, one on the line. So one, two is just going to be a bit above, right? Does it work? Is two greater than one over one? And the answer is, it is. So therefore, I'm going to get, again, this section above. It's a bit weird, there are not three sections, or two, there are in fact four. And they're broken into half by this discontinuity, and then there's above and below on both sides of the discontinuity. Does that make sense? Okay, I've given you one, two, three examples, I'm gonna give you one more, and then I'm gonna set you to work independently. This guy is pretty important. <laughs> Okay, now relax, I'll help you out with this one. I won't set you to your own devices, okay? Go ahead, draw your set of axes, and from what I've told you from the boundaries so far, what can you tell me about the boundary of this? What is it? What kind of shape is it? It's a circle, very good. Uh, so, keep putting down my colors. Uh, am I gonna draw the circle filled or dotted? Filled. Filled, because the boundary is included. So let's go ahead and chuck that guy in there. He intersects with the coordinate axis of pretty predictable spots because the radius of this circle is 4. So this will be 4, 4, negative 4, negative 4. Okay. 
Now, here's another way you can think about it. Uh, you're not going to be able to use this rule of thumb we've seen before about up or down, right? Uh, we really truly are going to have inside or outside in this case, okay? So which one is it? x squared plus y squared has to be greater than or equal to 16. x squared plus y squared has to be greater than or equal to 16. So therefore, let me give you an example of a value that would work. If x squared plus y squared were equal to 25, would that set of points satisfy this inequality? Think for a moment. You know where x squared plus y squared is. It's a circle, center origin, radius 5. Well, if this is true, then all you have to do is substitute in here, and 25 is indeed greater than or equal to 16. Or what about x squared plus y squared equals 36? Is this also going to work? Yes, in fact, because it's greater than or equal to, you can just make this radius as large as you like. So therefore, all of these guys are just circles that go further away, right? And you can have circles as far away as you want. So therefore, oh, yeah, here we go. I'm going to get the outside, right? Everywhere out here. All of these guys are all fine, okay? Yeah. Can, can you like just sub in zero zero for that? Can you sub in zero zero? Absolutely you can. You can do it the same way that we did before. Zero squared plus zero squared. Is that greater than or equal to 16? Not, not last I checked, because zero is not greater than 16. So therefore, the origin is not part of the boundary. So therefore, everything else is. Does that make sense? Yeah. 